When I was able to go to the masjid for the first time in 1998, I said, look, I just want to know, do you have some proof? Where is the proof that your religion is what you say it is? And my first proof handed to me about the deen of Al-Islam was the Qur'an. So I took the Qur'an home and I started reading it. And I remember reading Surah Al-Fatiha. All praise belongs to Allah who is the Lord of all the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. You alone do we worship and you alone do we seek our assistance. Guide us to the straight path. As soon as I read that, Jesus' prayer that he taught his disciples in the Bible came to mind. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and lead us, uh, you know, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And there were such glaring similarities. And what we have is like two rays from the same lamp. That was the feeling that I got reading Surah Al-Fatiha. And then I turned over to Surah Al-Baqarah. The second verse is the reason I decided to look into Islam. It's the reason I decided to keep reading the Quran. It could very well be the reason I'm a Muslim today. It's Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 2. This is the book. It's common to hear from our Muslim friends that the Quran and the Bible are similar books and that they supposedly complement one another. Al-Ankabut verse 46 instructs Muslims to say these words to Christians and say, we believe in what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to you. Our God and your God is one, and to him we submit. Yusha Evans, the Muslim man speaking in the beginning of this video, was born and raised as a Christian. According to his testimony, he read the Bible from cover to cover, then decided to leave Christianity in search for the truth. Not long after this, he found himself reading the Qur'an and eventually converted to Islam in 1998. In his video called One Qur'an Verse Made Me a Muslim, Yusha references Al-Fatiha verses 2 through 7, which say this, all praise is for Allah, Lord of all worlds, the most compassionate, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. Guide us along the straight path, the path of those you have blessed, not those you are displeased with or those who are astray. He then compares this opening chapter of the Qur'an to the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew chapter 6. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Yusha testifies to have flipped the page over to the next chapter of the Qur'an, Al-Baqarah, and it was in this moment that he decided to pursue Islam because he read these words. This is the book. There is no doubt about it. A guide for those mindful of Allah. I'm sure there has to be a lot more to this man's story as to why he converted to Islam. But it still leaves me asking, that's it? That's all it took? According to Yusha's testimony, all it took to convert him to Islam was reading a grand total of seven verses. Six from Al-Fatiha and one from Al-Baqarah. Imagine reading the first seven verses of Genesis and thinking, Okay, that's it. I'm convinced. The Bible's the truth. Now, the point of this video is not to discredit Yusha's testimony, or anyone else's for that matter. If Yusha wants to be a Muslim, then that's his choice, and I wish him all the best. But there was something striking about his testimony that really caught my attention. Yusha compared the opening passage of the Qur'an to the Lord's Prayer in the Bible, and said that they are like two rays of light from the same light source. And this is where I have to ask, 
Is that really true? 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So far, this is a fairly easy idea or concept for our Muslim friends to agree with. Naturally, their response to this verse would be to say, yes, this verse is referring to Allah, who is the source of light himself, and in him there is no evil or darkness at all. They might even reference an nur verse 35, which says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, light upon light. Allah guides whoever he wills to his light. But here is where things start to get tricky for Islam and our Muslim friends. If we continue reading past 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, we come across verse 7, which says this, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. And this is where things begin to unravel for Islam. Let's dissect 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 piece by piece and see how this ray of light shines in comparison to Islam's ray of light. According to this verse, the only way that we have fellowship with one another and with God himself is by walking in in his light. This is reinforced by the very words that Jesus himself spoke in the Gospel of John chapter 14. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Now, our Muslim friends might argue, well, yeah, but Jesus was just a prophet. And what he's really saying here is that good Muslims who obey Allah and Jesus will have a home with Allah and Jesus in Jannah, or paradise. Very clever! But we aren't done with 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 just yet. Notice, in the latter part of that verse, we are told, And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son cleanses us from all sin. If God is light and we walk in his light, then we have fellowship with one another and with God himself. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This is by far the most significant part of this verse because it teaches us three truths that no Muslim can ever agree with. The first truth is that Jesus Christ was crucified. There are countless sources outside of the Bible, both Christian and non-Christian, that prove the crucifixion of Jesus Christ did in fact happen. But what does the light of Allah say regarding the death of Jesus? But they neither killed nor crucified him. It was only made to appear so. Even those who argue for this crucifixion are in doubt. They have no knowledge whatsoever, only making assumptions. They certainly did not kill him. The second truth that John's epistle teaches us is that Christ is God's one and only Son. Again, how does the light of God in the Bible compare to that of Allah in the Qur'an? They say, Allah has offspring. Glory be to him. He is self-sufficient. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. You have no proof of this. Do you say about Allah what you do not know? And say, all praise is for Allah who has never had any offspring, nor does he have a partner in governing the kingdom. 
Allah has never had any offspring, nor is there any God besides him. What's interesting about these Quranic verses is that they imply that we Christians, who are polytheists, believe in three separate gods rather than one triune God. O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you ever ask the people to worship you and your mother as gods besides Allah? The Quran also claims that Christians worship God the Father, Jesus, and Mary. <laughs> they have certainly disbelieved who say, Allah is the third of three, and there is no God except one God. And if they do not desist from what they are saying, there will surely afflict the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. Despite being self-sufficient, Allah still fails to comprehend the concept of the Holy Trinity. The third truth brought to us by John's epistle is that Christ cleanses us from all our sins. Well, since the Qur'an teaches that Jesus was neither God's son, nor was he ever crucified, that means that he cannot make any atonement for sins. So now the question becomes, who takes that role in Islam? Muhammad talked to us, saying, On the day of resurrection, the people will surge with each other like waves, and then they will come to Adam and say, Please intercede for us with your Lord. Adam will say, I am not fit for that, but you'd better go to Abraham, as he is the Khalil of the Beneficent. They will go to Abraham, and he will say, I am not fit for that, but you'd better go to Moses, as he is the one whom Allah spoke directly. So they will go to Moses, and he will say, I am not fit for that, but you'd better go to Jesus, as he is a soul created by Allah and his word. They will go to Jesus, and he will say, I am not fit for that, but you'd better go to Muhammad. They would come to me, and I would say, I am for that. Then I will ask for my Lord's permission, and it will be given. And then he will inspire me to praise him with such praises as I do not know now. So I will praise him with those praises and will fall down before him. Then it will be said, O Muhammad, raise your head and speak, for you will be listened to, and ask for you will be granted your request and intercede for your intercession will be accepted. Muhammad, the man who sinned more than 70 times per day, is the one who will carry the hope of eternal salvation for all Muslims. Good luck with that one, my Muslim friends. Yusha Evans and I have some things in common. We've both read the Qur'an from cover to cover. We've both read the Bible from cover to cover. But here's the difference between Yusha and I. I don't try to twist the Bible into making it sound similar to the Qur'an. The Bible and the Qur'an are nothing alike. And I'm aware enough to understand that, and I'm honest enough to say it. We believe in what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to you. Our God and your God is one, and to him we submit. That's the Qur'an verse that made me become a Christian. Because the reality is, when compared to the light of the world, who is Jesus, the light of Allah isn't actually light at all. Until next time, Salam.